Greetings, everyone. I'm happy to be speaking to all of you attending the study group symposium. My name is Carolyn Kendall, and I'm one of the surviving members of the forum. The forum was the group that studied the evolving Urantia papers for 30 years before the papers were published as the Urantia book. I was a member of the last five years of the forum, and I was invited by Gaetan Charlan to provide some background information about the publication mandate. Many readers ask about the purpose of the publication mandate and whether it was a genuine communication from the same planetary overseers who provided the revelation. They also ask whether it is still timely. I assure you that all of the pre-papers material as well as the messages that came after the papers were complete were commissioned and communicated by the same beings as the Arantia papers. They came in the same voices or the same writing and by the same techniques as the papers themselves. First, the correct title of the so-called publication mandate was the timing of the Arantia book and the subtitle was Introduction to the Publication Mandate. The attached order authorizing publication was fairly brief, as I recall. It granted permission to the human contact commissioners to proceed with the final steps of publishing the Arantia book. The contact commissioners could not just rush ahead and, and publish the papers any time they wanted to. They had to wait for permission from the revelators. As it happened, formal approval came from a personality who arrived on Urantia on August 21st, 1951. He was a heretofore unknown Melchizedek son named Norson. He was introduced as the new regent of the acting planetary prince. We know that the planetary prince of Urantia is Christ Michael, who achieved that title immediately after his baptism in January AD 26. He replaced Caligastia, who had joined in the Lucifer Rebellion. Michael did not remain on Urantia to assume direction of the daily administration of our world. Machavinta Melchizedek was recently bestowed with the title of Vicegerent Planetary Prince. Although Machavinta has visited Urantia after his own bestowal many times in association with the Urantia revelation, he has not assumed direct management of the unseen beings who govern our world. We don't know how long Norson will remain to direct the Urantia revelation, but as Bill Sadler said on the day that the message was read, we can't have two planetary princes. The previously unknown Melchizedek son was accompanied by Machavinta Melchizedek and by Gabriel, the bright and morning star of Nebadon. He was introduced to the contact commissioners and the visitors, those visitors, were present during the observance of Jesus' birthday on August 21st. They were invisible to human eyes. The Rancher papers had been in preparation since January 1925 and had evolved gradually through two series until 1935. Much of the effort between 1925 and 1941 was consumed with clarification of the text with the revelators and with retyping, proofreading, and making approved corrections of the text. There was a wait of several years because of World War II and the Korean War 
as well as a succession of further threats to the security and peace of the world. The revelators granted permission in June 1941 to begin setting type. The printer of choice was R. R. Dunley and Sons of Chicago, Illinois. Each part of the book was set in type as funds became available. The revelators waited until the forum had completed a full reading of part four in their Sunday meetings before authorizing typesetting of part four. The last paper of part four of the Jesus Papers was read January 8, 1948. Part four was set in type by June 1950. Three months after his August 1951 arrival, Norson sent a communication to the Contact Commission on November 22, 1951. He had appointed a Supreme Court of Urantia consisting of the heads of the various orders of beings functioning on the planet. He also advised that the affairs of the Contact Commission would be turned over to Urantia Foundation on February the 11th, 1954. In August 1952, he sent another communication which stated, I and I alone shall direct the publication of the Urantia, of the Urantia book. And he said, if I do not provide such information on or before January 1st, 1955, then the trustees of Urantia Foundation should proceed with plans for publication in accordance with their own judgment. I reserve the right to intervene at any time. When asked why they had not heard from him for an entire year, he responded that he had been, quote, working to prevent World War III, end of quote. Norson's third message was the publication mandate and the timing of the Urantia book, which was read to the forum on September 21st, 1952. This date was confirmed by a notation in a pri private diary. I heard the mandate and the eloquent introduction read to the forum by Bill Sadler. Bill expressed the personal opinion that they probably would not hear anything further from our friends, as he put it, saying, I guess we are on our own from now on. The forum members had been thinking in terms of large assemblies of groups after publication, but when one man in the audience heard that we were to establish thousands of small study groups, his comment was, now they tell us. Everyone else in the forum was quite excited to know that the book would soon be available to them to read at home. There was some discussion as to what is meant by the statement in the introduction to the mandate. Quote, the book belongs to the era immediately to follow the conclusion of the present ideological struggle. End of quote. Some felt he was speaking of communism. Others felt he was talking about some other political upheaval, while yet another person believed that the world would not be ready until the Lucifer Rebellion had been adjudicated and the circuits were opened. No answers were provided. The mandate was read again to the forum on April 4, 1955. Copies of this statement was placed in each of the Urantia Brotherhood Departmental Committee secretaries' notebooks, and copies were also given to various leaders. It was read to many individuals as they rode to leadership positions in the years after publication, and nothing further was received in either writing or orally. The timing of the Arantia book. 
We regard the Urantia book as a feature of the progressive evolution of human society. It is not germane to the spectacular episodes of epical revolution, even though it may apparently be time to appear in the wake of one such revolution in human society. The book belongs to the era immediately to follow the conclusion of the present ideological struggle. That will be the day when men will be willing to seek truth and righteousness. When the chaos of the present confusion has passed, it will be more readily possible to formulate the cosmos of a new and improved era of human relationships. And it is for this better order of affairs on earth that the book has been made ready. But the publication of the book has not been postponed to that possibly somewhat remote date. An early publication of the book has been provided so that it may be in hand for the training of leaders and teachers. Its present is also required to engage the attention of persons of means who may be thus led to provide funds for pub translations into other languages. You who have dedicated your lives to the service of the book and the Brotherhood can little realize the import of your doings. You will doubtless live and die without fully realizing you are participating in the birth of a new age of religion on this world. The future is not open to your mortal comprehension, but you will do well to diligently study the order, plan, and methods of progression as they were enacted in the earth life of Michael when the Word was made flesh. You are becoming actors in an ensuing episode when the word is made book. Great is the difference in these dispensations of religion, but many are the lessons which can be learned from a study of the former age. You must again study the times of Jesus on earth. You must carefully take note of how the kingdom of heaven was inaugurated in the world. Did it evolve slowly and unfold naturally? Or did it come with a sudden show of force and with spectacular exhibition of power? Was it evolutionary or revolutionary? You must learn to possess your souls in patience. You are in association with a revelation of truth which is a part of the natural evolution of religion on this world. Over rapid growth would be suicidal. The book is being given to those who are ready for it long before the day of its worldwide mission. Thousands of study groups must be brought into existence and the book must be translated into many tongues. Thus will the book be in readiness when the battle for men's liberty is finally won and the world is once more made safe for the religion of Jesus and the freedom of mankind. <laughs>